Hello, boys and girls. Boy, how I miss you in class. But today, I want to just give you a, a little bit more of an understanding of our new reading comprehension skill that we're going over. So we've talked a lot about main idea and all different kinds of things that help us in our comprehension of our reading and understanding what we're reading better. And my light just went off. That's fun, right? The joys of technology. Um, but today we're going to talk about text features. So what specifically is text features? And I am going to hold on one second. Let me see if I can present this PowerPoint. Haha, -ha, there we go. Okay, so understanding text features. What is it when I read that's going to help me better understand by using my eyes what I see? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to go through this PowerPoint with you. And we're going to talk about all the different types of text features, um, headings, photographs. Um, I don't know if you listen to the word photographs, you hear the word photo, right? So photo means picture, titles, captions, and illustrations. Some of these are things we've already talked about in class. And then some of these are things that we have not yet talked about. Okay. So what is a feature? When I say feature, you're probably thinking, well, what is a feature, right? So the word feature is used in many different contexts or situations. So we've talked about words that have different multiple meanings, so they can mean several different things. So in this context, a feature is an important part of something, okay? So let's look at the next picture. So if I look at this, we know that this picture um, is located where? Say it out loud, under the water. It's under the water in the ocean, right? And so if I asked you, what are some features of this coral reef? This is called a coral reef. So what do you see? Okay, what would you tell me? Well, you would see rocks, right? Coral, water, sand. Those are all a part, or those are all important features of what you see. So what are some facial features? So what are important features of your face? So go ahead and say it out loud. What are some important facial features? Yep, you should have said your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your chin, your cheeks. All of those are important parts of your face, right? So let's think about the playground. What are some features of your playground? So go ahead, say it out loud. Good. So you should have said playground um, or important features of the playground are swing set, sliding board, monkey bars, right? Uh, jungle gems, all those things, balance beams, all of those are part of a playground. So if the, when we talk about features here, we're talking about the most important part. So now I want you to take your mind to books. Okay, so we're going to talk about now what is the most important thing, most important feature about books that are going to help us understand better. Because sometimes, I know for your age, when you open up a book and it just has a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of chapters, okay, if you don't really like to read, then you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure about this, right? So sometimes articles and stories have different features that kind of help us make reading more fun and interesting and help us understand it better. So text features are parts of text that draw your attention to important information, okay? So things you don't, the, or the author doesn't want you to miss when you read, okay? So it says you'll need a, if we were in class, we would do this, but I just want you to focus on um, the different parts of story. So the first thing is a title. Everybody knows what a title is, right? The title is the piece of writing that tells what it's all about. Okay, so if you had a book, the title of the story would probably be on the front. If you had an article, the title would be on the top of the article. So if you do have a book, okay, um, you notice that the titles, how the titles are written, okay, what kind of font do they use? And if you're familiar with typing, a font is the different ways you can type, okay? So the way the letters are formed, that is the font. Um, are the titles long or are the titles short? And then we have what's called subtitles, okay? So subtitles, you have a title, and then you'll have what's called a colon, which are two little dots, right? And then you'll have another part of a title. So sometimes uh, the story might say uh, the bridge, and then it might have a little colon, and then it'll say the long road home, okay? So the subtitle would be the next line. So if you look closely here, okay, can you find the title of the article? Okay, 
So if I look here, it should be at the very top. So the title is right here, A Garden Under Glass. And see how I told you about the colon? Do you see those two little dots right there? That's called a colon. So the title here is A Garden Under Glass. The subtitle would be The Conservatory at Longwood Gardens. That would be the subtitle. Okay. Stories also have headings. Headings are also a very important part of um, looking at a story. So what is a heading? So if the title tells me what the whole thing is going to be about, sometimes the headings are going to explain what the paragraphs are about. So it's going to help me go back and understand the paragraph. So headings introduce topics in the text. They are often written in bold print, and we've talked about bold print, and we'll talk about that later. Large print, or even colorful text, okay? Those are all things that draw your attention to the story or the book. So let's look and see where the headings are. So in the same thing, we said our title is up here. So if you look closely, I don't know if I can zoom in. Whoops, sorry. I don't know if I can zoom in or not. Um, if you have really good eyes, better eyesight than me, okay? Look for the headings. So the headings are gonna tell me what the paragraphs are about. So if I look here, see how it's in bold print? Oh, so it says drooling dragons and spitting salamanders, the indoor children's garden. Then it goes on to talk about that. Okay, so here are the headings. There's a heading, here's a heading, and here's a heading. So these headings kind of help me know what is this paragraph talking about. Okay, so it kind of summarizes almost the main idea of the paragraph. So what is this paragraph talking about? What is this paragraph talking about. Okay, so headings are found at the top of the paragraphs. Okay, so if you have a book, you can do this on your own. You can look through books that you have and see if they have any headings, okay, um, and see if you can find bold print. What are the headings have one word? Are they questions? Sometimes headings can be questions. Sometimes they can be phrases. Okay, let's talk about bold and italic, okay? So bold print is print that is darker, and we've talked about this a lot in class, okay? And brighter. And italics, if you look here, italics looks like this. You see how this print looks different? Italics is almost like a slanted type of writing. All right, so if you look here, can you find the bold and the italics? So let's see. So this is an italicized word, and that's a big word. Okay, it says adaptation. See how that's italics? And then the bold, yep, and there's another italicized word. And I'm sure you can find the bold here. Look, bold, 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 okay? Um, can you find more bold prints? Yep, see migrate's a bold word, amphibian's a bold word. And if you remember, why do we have bold words? Right, we have bold words to help us better understand and not miss, okay? It's that important word that they don't want you to miss. They want it to grab your attention. And same for italics. Sometimes they'll use italics for maybe words that are unknown, that you might be big words that you just don't know how to read, okay? So look for bold and italicized print in your book. See if you can find any, right? All right, let's talk about illustrations and photographs, okay? Illustrations are drawings. They are created by an artist. Illustrations can be very basic or they can be very detailed. And then photographs are taken by a photographer. They show real objects in real settings. So the difference is with illustrations is the author actually draws it. A lot of books will have what's called an illustrator, and that's the person who draws the picture. And then sometimes they'll actually take a picture of what they're talking about so you can see it, what it really looks like. Okay, so that's the difference between an illustration and a photograph. But both of those visually help us see better what the reader is maybe reading about. And so we can see it with our own eyes instead of just picturing it in our head. Okay, so look at this photograph. Okay, so it's talking about the old schoolhouse was falling apart. It had been abandoned for so long that nature started to take over. Vines grew on the outside. Snow and rain caused wood to rot and beams to break. After the roof collapsed, trees and weeds grew where students once learned. Okay, so this is actually a photograph of this old schoolhouse falling apart. So now as I'm reading the words, I can also visually see what this schoolhouse looks like as it falls apart. So a photograph this was actually taken, right? Okay, um, and if you have a book, you can look for photographs. See if you can find a real life um, photo in your book. An illustration, remember, is what the illustrator, all books usually have illustrators, which they draw pictures about what they're talking about. So this is what a schoolhouse looked like. 
Schoolhouses were small buildings. Most had only one room. In some places, schoolhouses were made out of bricks. In other places, they were made out of wood or stone. On the prairie, schoolhouses were even made out of sod, okay? And so if you look here at the, the schoolhouse, okay, we see one-room schoolhouses had no electricity. This meant no electric lights. Can you imagine going to school with no lights? Kind of like right now, right? All my lights went off, okay? Thank goodness I have sunlight. Um, so the author here, or the illustrator, drew a picture so you could see what a one-room schoolhouse looked like. So now not only am I reading the words, but I'm looking at these pictures, okay, that help kind of help me understand what the reader's talking about, okay? So remember, features are the most important parts of a story, okay? So I'm going to stop here. If you have a book, get a book, see if you can find the title, subtitles, see if you can find um, bold, italicized pictures. Look through it a second and then come back for the next video. It'll be super short as we wrap this up.